In this video, I'm gonna talk about a trick that many sellers of secondhand tools and vintage tools use to make their tools look a little prettier, but actually can disguise their condition, uh, particularly their bad condition. G'day, welcome to Chestnut and Hack, and my name is Stuart Chignall. I got into vintage tools for two reasons. One is because I love old stuff, old tools, old techniques, and the, the old things that were, were made with them. But also it was because I couldn't <laughs> afford new tools, and so buying a rusty old chisel from the trash and treasure market was much more of an option than you know, buying a, a new chisel. But when you're getting started, it's very easy to spend more than a little bit of money on stuff that is either junk or is gonna take an extraordinarily long time or a lot of effort to restore into a usable condition. And one of the techniques that uh, sellers use to make their tools, their stock more presentable, which nothing wrong with that, is the wire brush. Problem I have with using a wire brush though on stock that you're going to sell is that it actually doesn't do anything to improve the condition of the tool. It just masks the condition of the tool. It makes it look shiny, but yeah, it doesn't. Because all a wire brush does is remove any loose rust, but the rust that is actually stuck on the tool, the rust that is gonna be still causing damage to the tool, it just polishes it. Rust is iron oxide. And when you wire brush a tool that's got you know, a reasonable coating of rust on it, all you're doing is polishing that rust. You're not actually really removing any rust. The, the rust is actually stuck to the tool. You're not removing it. You're just polishing it. Now here is a lump of uh, potentially gold ore uh, inside the oxide material that is stuck on this quartz. There could be trace amounts of gold. And when I say trace amounts, we talk, could be, it could be stuff that's worth processing out. But it's primarily iron and oxygen. And if we take this rough sample and we stick it on the wire brush, you can see that yeah, a few seconds on the wire brush and I've taken a rough looking surface and I've polished it to be shiny. And really that's all a wire brush is doing to your tools when you wire brush them. It just polishes the rust. Now, this makes the tool look shiny, much prettier. And that's why a lot of sellers use it as a technique to make their stock look more presentable. Nothing wrong with making your stock look more presentable. You know, you know it's a, a, a piece of furniture that's covered in dust versus a piece of furniture that's been wiped down with a rag. You, you're gonna get a better price for one that's been cleaned. But the thing is, wire brushing doesn't really, doesn't really clean tools. It just makes them look shiny. We've got a set of five Japanese ax heads. They're all, you know, a bit manky, some more than others. Now look how shiny that is, hey? Gorgeous. But all of that is still, that's all, that's all rust. Everything you can see there is rust. It might be shiny rust, but it's still rust. If you are inexperienced, this can be a problem because you can look at two tools side by side and you might be tempted to pay more for the shiny one, especially if you're just looking on, you know, photos on eBay or whatever but really hey, you've got no idea what you're buying because until that rust is removed, you've got no idea of what the condition of the steel is like underneath. And sometimes you can look at a tool and it just looks like a little bit of surface rust, but underneath that rust are some deep grievous pits, which are gonna take forever to clean, to, to grind out so that the tool is, just, is, is usable. Or alternatively, sometimes you can look at a tool which is quite scaly and there's surprisingly little rust underneath it. And so it's not until you remove that rust that you can see and assess the condition of the tool and how much effort you're gonna to have to put into restoring it. And therefore what it's worth you paying for it. Alternatives to wire brushing. Uh, you can uh, use something like a, a vinegar uh, or some other light uh, acid, like a weak hydrochloric acid solution. Works very effectively at removing rust, but it's an acid, so it's also going to remove metal. And due to the nature of the cavities or the pits that are formed by corrosion, you have to leave the tool in there for quite a considerable length of time to get rid of rust that is inside those pits. And if you do leave a tool in an acid solution long enough to get rid of all the acid inside the pits, 
you're going to be removing metal and that's going to be causing damage to the tool. So yeah, I, I never use acids to, to clean rust off tools. Another solution you can use is a solution of molasses, very gentle, only removes iron oxide, only removes the rust. But molasses is expensive and you can only reuse the solution so many times before the sugars in the molasses start to ferment. And once the sugars have turned into alcohol, then over a relatively short period of time, the alcohol then turns into vinegar, which then gives you an acid solution. Not a problem, you just get a new solution of molasses. But like I said, molasses is expensive. So what I recommend to everyone who's restoring tools is electrolysis. It's incredibly simple and it doesn't cause any damage to the tool and it only removes the rust. It doesn't remove any metal. Uh, the only two caveats to that I would say is that if you have a tool or a metal item of some sort that has an original label or original paintwork or chroming or anything like that, any sort of, sort of surface layer that you want to preserve, you can't use electrolysis because the electrolysis will very effectively remove all that original material. So if, <laughs> if you want to preserve labels and paint, don't use electrolysis. The other caveat is if you leave an item in an electrolysis bath for a long, long time, the lattice work of the steel can get impregnated with hydrogen. And this can cause a process called uh, hydrogen hardening or hydrogen embrittlement. And it makes the tool steel very, very hard, but also very, very brittle. However, this isn't really a problem because all you need to do is just leave the tool for, you know, a while, depending on the temperature, it could be, you know, a week or two, or if it's a nice hot day, like, just hours and all the hydrogen will off gas out of the steel returning it to its normal temper so yeah like I said electrolysis so well and that's, and so that's why I recommend electrolysis because it's very effective at removing rust and doesn't damage the tools but a lot of people say they don't like the look of electrolysis it's too clean and they like the idea of the wire brush and they like that sort of polished rust look and if you're a collector, you might say, well, I'm not restoring the tool to use, so I don't really need to remove the rust in order to be able to restore the tool. Yes, but rust is highly water absorbent. And if you've got any sort of moisture in the air, and pretty much all environments do have a certain level of moisture, except, you know, maybe inside air conditioned houses and stuff, the modern houses these days, maybe not. But certainly if you've got a tool or your collection out in the you know out in the shed that rust on that tool is going to be absorbing moisture and that moisture is going to be trapped next to the steel underneath the rust and that rust is therefore going to accelerate the process of corrosion so even if you're a collector even if you're not going to use the tools if you want to preserve them particularly if you've got valuable pieces good idea to get the rust off there are exceptions to that of course, if you've got, you know, an archaeological piece and removing the rust would cause significant damage or loss of shape or structure, then get it into a hermetically sealed cabinet uh, with a dehumidifier and that will preserve it. But if you don't have pieces of that quality and you're not prepared to sort of invest that sort of money in, in you know, preservation cabinets and stuff, yeah, I... Any, any sort of valuable collector's piece, don't use a wire brush. That's my opinion. Other people I know really, well, that's, that's the way they like it. They, they, they like the wire brush look. And in fact, one of these axes, since I started working on this video, I've actually sold. And the guy specifically asked me not to put it through an electrolysis bath, just to leave it raw because he wants to give it a wire brush treatment. It's a beautiful little falling axe. Yeah, I'd restore that to use. Definitely wouldn't wire brush it. So thanks to him for letting me keep this axe while I did the filming for this video. And if you're new to the channel, hope, you, hope you'll subscribe and join us again. Uh, and if you've, you've been around for a while, please, uh, you know, like, share, comment, all that sort of stuff because it helps me grow the channel. And I'm hoping to really, you know, have a good year this year and really get some, you know, some bigger results for the channel and do some more exciting stuff. And if you want to support the channel in other ways, well, you can always pop over to my eBay store and, and buy something. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye.